This right here is an absolute unit. This is the Terramaster T64236 Bay High Performance NAS. They sent this over to review, and I will note that as I do review this, I currently use Synology back there as my NAS of choice. One of the main reasons I like this guy is just how beastly it truly looks. This is one of the few desktop NASs that kind of looks like it's supposed to be rack mounted, but actual physical appearances don't play too much of a role in the actual usability and the functionality of these devices. So in this video, we're gonna quickly overview the hardware of this guy, go ahead and install some hard drives. These are four terabyte hard drives and it's the same uh, brand and all that that I've been using in the Synology. This is a six bay unit and I only have four drives, so that's what we're gonna be installing. I just noticed my shirt was inside out. I'm super professional. I guess that's a good time for a sponsor segue. This video is sponsored by Linode. Don't currently have the means to play around with something like this, but you want to get something spun up in the cloud with absolute ease, check out Linode and just how easy it is to go ahead and set up an instance, whether it be various Linux distributions, or if you want to make your life even easier and use one of their one-click installers to get various applications spun up. When it comes to plans, you could get started with as little as $5 a month or move up to something like a dedicated CPU or even a dedicated GPU plan. And better yet, if you use the link down below, you get a $100 60 day credit. So you could go ahead and try it out today. Now, before I get this bad boy set up here, we need to talk about what is on the outside and inside of this guy. Right about there, that looks kind of good. I'm gonna cheat a little bit and open up their spec sheet right here. So this thing does feature a Intel Celeron processor, which does have its integrated GPU, so it does support hardware transcoding, which is very nice. Something that that Synology back there of the exact same price is actually lacking, and I'm gonna be getting into that into a different video. This thing does ship with four gigabytes of DDR4 memory, it has two slots in there, so you could theoretically upgrade it up to 32 gigabytes, with two 16 gig sticks. Like we said, it has six drives here. This is what the uh, drive bays look like. And this thing can support up to 120 terabytes if you put a 20 terabyte drive in each one of these bays. And the actual mechanism is pretty nice. You just pop that on in like that and you're good to go. If we go ahead and flip her on over to the back and check out some of the IO, right here we have two ethernet. These are 2.5 gigabit RJ45 ports. We have two 3.0 USBs at 10 gigabits each, as well as an HDMI, which is not very common for NAS units like this. And then up here we have our power. This is a 12 volt in DC, which that's kind of a, a weird placement for it, in my opinion. And apparently somewhere in this guy, there's a spot to go ahead and upgrade and add some uh, NVMe SSDs for caching, up to two of them. Scrolling down, we have a lot more specs. I'm not gonna get into everything here, but apparently noise level is at 28.4 dB. It is a 120 watt power supply, two year limited warranty. We can see the power consumption and all the various RAID types and clients. For file protocol, we have SMB, NSF, FTP or SFTP, everything you'd expect. So I've really only taken the NAS out of the box because it's just pretty. I wanted it on the desk. In here, we got a box within a box. And the box within a box has a bunch of stuff. We have a, a little little screwdriver. We got our DC 12 volt output power right there. We have a, a little squishy thing, more squishy things. And then we have some screws for both 3.5 and 2.5 hard drives. More squishy things, probably foot pads. Warranty stuff. There's no like quick start guide. It doesn't look like, what is this? Ah, of course, it's a QR code. All right, I'll actually probably need that. All right, so let's go ahead and get this set up here. Let's see how intuitive this processes. All right, so we opened up the little quick start guide on their website. We have a, not a five, we have a six. And here we are, it's the only six drive apparently, so let's go ahead and start. Man, I could have used this as a script. Please refer to the following guides. Install hard drive, all right. Pull the tray out of the device, we've done that. All right, so when it comes to the uh, actual hard drive installation here, it's, it's not as easy as the Synology, that has like one of those quick kind of pop on method things. This we are actually having to use these screws. So we just go ahead and pop in the hard drive like so, and we line it up. So you can kind of see there how it looks. I'm gonna screw it in there, there, and there. When we install it this way, this is where it's gonna plug in within the unit. And that's how it looks. It's pretty schnazzy. And screw her on in there. I mean, the initial setup with the Synology with these things, it may be slightly easier, but after I plugged in those for that unit, I've never pulled them out. So it's not that big of a deal. Okay, we got them all in. So now all you do is you get this drive, you line it up just like so, and we're gonna go ahead and slide her on in. 
And when you kind of push it and it gets to a certain point, this will start to push down a bit. So I can just go ahead, slide it there, go ahead and lock it in, and there we go. And of course, to get them out, you would just push down on this little tab here and they slide out. Now in an attempt to save some time, I already got the other ones installed, so we could go ahead and go continue. So insert the devices into the tray. I've already done that. I did all the bottom ones first, just to keep the uh, center balance appropriate. So 2.5 inches, we're not doing that. Okay, connect it to the LAN cable. I'm gonna go ahead and zoom this on in so you guys can watch me struggle. So for now, the device is just gonna go right here. Plug that on in. Time for some power. Right, so we're plugging it right into the middle of the back. All right, so every, ah, ooh, ooh, there we go. All right, so everything's plugged in, including the power. There it is, very weird placement. Continue. Uh, short press the switch. There it is. We got a green light and it beeped at me. All right, so is our TNAS ready? I do believe it is. It's probably still booting up. All data contained on the newly added hard drives will be erased. That is more than fine by me. So to search for our NAS, we're gonna go here. And it just turned on, so it might not be ready yet. Yep, the websites are so slow, they need to switch to Linode. <laughs> Device table, where are you? Probably this one. There we go. Okay, so I just had to find the IP manually. How would you like to initialize? Let's go automatic, all hard drive will be erased, confirm. Here we go, and okay, so it, it does go in order from top to bottom, but that's fine. So we have hard drive one, four, five, and six, because I don't have anything in the uh, second and third bay, and this might take a minute, so we'll be back. All right, loading, wizard. So this is probably gonna be our setup wizard. Device name, Tinas, make it a little more pretty. This is the Terra Master. All right, I am not in Beijing. I am in fact negative eight instead of eight. All right, so I'm not getting the email, so I'm gonna skip this for now. Warning, this operation will delete all the data. Let's confirm that. Oh, format RAID. It didn't ask what kind of RAID I wanted. I wonder what it will select. If I were to have been given the choice, it would have been RAID 5. While it does that, I was just kind of curious. These are the uh, options for download for my specific device. We have bootloader, PC apps. Uh, looks like we have an Ubuntu OS version, which is nice to see a Linux client. Mac OS, Windows, uh, TOS, which I believe that's their um, operating system. And then we have the update package. All right, it is just about finishing up here. We have the TerraMaster T6 my ID and whatnot, and I wonder if this will actually work. Yeah, the dot .local things aren't wanting to work for my network, but that's fine. And it looks like we're on the port 8181 for our main dashboard. And this is gonna be kind of how I judge it because nothing is more important to me than the actual software that is pre-installed. That's one of the main reasons you wouldn't just want to build your own is what you get out of the box. And here we are. It looks very similar to Synology. And just so you guys can kind of see what I'm talking about here, this right here is Synology. So even down here, we got some uh, information. We got our icons compared to over here. We got all the information. We got our icons. Okay, so we have technical support help control panel. Okay, man, this looks, <laughs> I mean, I'm not trying to talk crap, but this almost is like, looks like a ripoff. I mean, come on. <laughs> The real question is, what kind of RAID did it give me? Because it didn't let me pick. Storage pool. Volume, I have seven terabytes, so, oh, RAID six, okay. So not as much storage as I would prefer. EXT4 seems to be the default. There's no SSD cache in there. Here's the particular information on our hard drive, so we can see which ones we have installed and if they're uh, in risk, uh, defective, and whatnot. One thing, a lot of the loading screens for this is kind of slow. It also does seem to be doing something, so that might be Part of my problem. Applications. I mean, look at this. Package center. Even the B on Bay, look. <laughs> All right, is there anything good on here? Uh, Docker, uh, multimedia server. Docker's good. That basically unlocks a lot of potential just right there. Uh, MB server is here. Uh, we have Go, Google Drive Sync, DNS Server, Joomla for some reason. We have Java, iTunes, Nextcloud, that's pretty cool. Uh, OneDrive Sync, Own Cloud. So they do have they do have quite a few options. We got Plex right there. We have PHP and Python type stuff. Qubit Torrent, which is wonderful, as well as Transmission. So some torrent options. 
WordPress web server virtual box. Now that is cool for the uh, virtualization solution. I know Synology has their own, but it's cool virtual boxes here. Uh, more PHP stuff and Protainer. So that's nice if you're uh, better at Docker than I definitely am. Just, just to go ahead and see how easy it is to install one of these, let's go ahead and fire up a Plex server here. Looks like it's gonna be about 100 megabytes, not too bad at all. And it seems to have been installed. So up oh, there it goes, popped up right there. So now if I open it from here, organizes your video, music, whatever. If I hit enter, it's gonna open up the Plex port. So there we go, we now have Plex fired up. And while that figures out what it's trying to do, let's go ahead and go to our file manager. And here we have some SMB information, as well as the AFP. So for Mac users, we can use this. So if I go to network here, it looks like it's automatically detected, which is nice. And connect, there we go. Okay, so we have our public and our app data. Uh, I'm just gonna go ahead and put some media in public. Let's just go, let's go from one server to the next. Kids, movies, what movie do we want? I think we're gonna have to go with a goofy movie. Let's go back into public, paste that on in there. Okay, that's been moved over. Let's see how easy it is just to link up to that public folder. So Plex Pass, no. Well, I'd recommend Jellyfin. If you, you've been watching this channel for any length of time, you probably know that. So let's go ahead and go next. It's encoded properly already, but let's go ahead and add the library. This is going to be movies, movies, next, browse. Ooh, there it is. We have the whole access to the entire route, which is cool. So let's go public and just add that folder for now. This isn't a guide on how to set up uh, Plex. I would definitely do a lot more to get this all organized properly, but let's go next, done, and no. And all this is garbage, more Terra Master. Oh no, it's not wanting to pull my Goofy movie. Okay, uh, I think I figured it out. That was pretty simple. Um, under here, control panel, shared folder, public. We uh, select that, go to edit. Permissions, I gave guest read only privileges and gave myself read write privileges. I already had that, but guest needed read only. And like I said, with Plex, I would set it up a little bit differently. I'd create its very own shared folder and things like that but it works pretty good. We both have the Goofy movie and the Northman that I was testing here. And if I go ahead and stream this, let's make sure we don't have any audio and you guys don't get to see too much of it. Great movie, by the way, definitely recommend it. Let's go back over here and see what our system is doing. Yeah, we can see the CPU is having to work uh, pretty, pretty hard. It's needing to actually use the hardware transcoding because it's not a format that will uh, allow it to be done client side but let's go ahead and back out of this before Disney hits me with copyright strike. So overall setting up a media server on this thing was pretty easy. If we go to applications and one thing y'all are probably gonna be interested in is Docker itself. So let's see how that actually looks. All right, so here we go, Docker. Let's see what's currently running. Let's go back out of here and try to open it up through here. Okay, so again, this is almost identical to how it looks over it with us in Knology. Registry, we have a bunch of different stuff going on here. So we got Ubuntu, MySQL, Python, under images, it's not much, under containers, there's not much. Can we add our own? That's the real question, because this is not very many to choose from. Oh, here we go, okay. Registry Hub Docker, apply. There we go. Oh, there's pages, okay, that's helped. The, the software on this definitely needs some work. It seems like they're trying really hard to clone Synology, which I mean, Synology is fantastic when it comes to the, the software side of it, but they're trying too hard to make it the same thing, which makes me a little sad on the inside because TerraMaster, from a hardware standpoint, you are getting a little bit better of a value. In terms of the two I have back there, they are the exact same price MSRP. They're both $700, which yes, that is a little ridiculous, for a NAS, chances are I would almost recommend most people only need a little two bay one with an Intel Celeron processor. The thing is, back there, the TerraMaster has an entire extra drive and they're using that Celeron processor, which supports hardware transcoding, while the Synology has an AMD CPU that does not support hardware transcoding. So if you're trying to run a media server directly off of it, chances are you're going to run into some uh, performance hiccups. Personally, it's not a big deal for me because I have my uh, media server running in the Proxmox instance, but for most people, they're gonna wanna just do everything on one device, in which the hardware of TerraMaster, like I said, is the better value, but the software seems to be kinda lacking. And it looks like you are able to install TrueNAS on it, so that might be a, uh, 
a fun little project coming up because if the software is the only issue, we can fix the software. <laughs> Just the fact I didn't see the pop-up or whatever to go ahead and pick the actual type of raid we're using was the first kind of red flag when it comes to that. But overall, it's an absolute unit of a device and I am looking forward to using it for future projects as the Synology is currently my main unit and I don't wanna really screw around with that because I use it every single day. But this one, I think we could have a little bit of fun with this Terra Master guy on the channel a couple different times. With all that, anything I mentioned will be linked down below, including a couple videos that go into really specific detail from people who are way smarter than me when it comes to home labs and network attached storage devices, including one video that is a really nice one that compares multiple different units and how well they are at hardware transcoding. If that's something you're interested in, make sure you check the description and pinned comment for that. And with all of that, I do hope you have an absolutely beautiful day. Make sure you subscribe and you ring that bell so you do not miss any future uploads. Uh, yeah, peace out.